Du Jin started to buckle him into the seat and remarked that they needed to go on a date now, although Eula was surprised that they weren't actually pretending. The man warned her that he wasn't planning a wedding right now. However, he explained that he would like to introduce him to his parents, who are currently vacationing abroad and will return next week. Yulha was surprised by this offer and thought that he must be crazy to behave like this. With his head down, he desperately tried to figure out what to do now, because there was no way to deny it. Du Jin began to smell him and noticed that he seemed to have fully recovered. So he asked if the guy was really uncomfortable being around him. The guy was very confused. He did not understand how he could not see that he was uncomfortable, given the man's strange behavior. So he was upset and apologized. Yulha emphasized that if he was really sorry, he should take him home. Du Jin didn't understand why they couldn't spend some time together, because he just wanted to be with him. However, the man said that it was not worth it. The man emphasized that today would be the last time they would see each other, and promised that he would never do anything stupid again. Yulha blushed when he heard this. He was driven crazy by this expression on the man's face, which showed that he was ready for anything, even such persuasion. Suddenly, he felt that something strange was happening, because he could smell an unknown odor nearby. Du Jin promised the boy that if he felt sick, he would take him home right away, and if it was cold, he would warm him up. So he agreed. Finally, the man asked if he really didn't mind. The boy replied that he could do whatever he wanted. Du Jin suggested that he close his eyes and rest while they were driving. Then he gave him a blanket to cover himself with. He assumed that he must have been very tired, so Yulha thanked him for it, although he was surprised by his attentiveness. So, after a while, the car pulled into a special parking space near the beautiful waterfront. As soon as they got out, Yulha immediately heard the sound of water and was pleasantly surprised by what he saw. The guy was looking at the sea and thinking that, although he had been living here for years, he had never visited this picturesque place. The man explained that he comes here from time to time with his family. However, he emphasized that there is nothing special to see here, except for restaurants and cafes. That is why it is a perfect place for a walk. The man was surprised that he decided to spend time with him in such a quiet area of the city, so he assumed that maybe everything would be fine if it was really an innocent walk. Finally, the man asked if the boy was hungry. His stomach was rumbling, but he said he had no appetite and didn't really want to eat. Du Jin said that was wrong, suggested going to a restaurant nearby, and moved forward. The guy ran behind him and thought that he was now ashamed again, because that morning everything had not gone well. Suddenly, when Eula passed by a restaurant, he smelled something delicious, like king crab and grilled clams. The guy stopped and started drooling, even though the man was calling him to follow him. However, as soon as he noticed this reaction, he turned around and noticed that the man seemed to like seafood. Yula was frightened and hastened to explain that he was just looking at it. Du Jin hugged him and assured him that they would have time to try Western food later. He also asked him to tell the truth. So he replied that he didn't mind. After that, the man smiled and said that when he heard his stomach rumbling, he felt better. Du Jin put his arm around the man's back and said that, although he hadn't planned to, he would probably have to feed him again. He added that he was too thin and lacked stamina, which shamed him enough. After a while, Eula found himself in front of a table full of various dishes, so he couldn't take his eyes off them, as everything looked delicious. However, the man noticed that the boy was afraid to start eating, so he ordered him to do so immediately. After that, he thanked him for the food. Suddenly, the boy turned very red. When Dojin asked him what was wrong, he explained that he couldn't get the meat out of the crab carefully. The man offered to help him, so in a moment he skillfully did it himself and handed him a plate with the finished pieces. The guy was surprised, but thanked him. Yulha stuffed his mouth full and enjoyed these incredible dishes. So the man asked if he was tasting good. The boy smiled sweetly and replied with satisfaction that he really liked everything. 
The man emphasized that if he had known that he liked crabs, he would have made crab porridge in the morning. Then he offered to try clams, oysters, and sushi. However, he refused and asked him not to order so much. Du Jin noticed this excitement, so he said he was just watching. Later, he asked him if he liked the fish. He replied that he did and that it was even better than veal or pork. The man looked down and quietly replied that he would remember his tastes and preferences in food for the future. Eula felt a little ashamed of this because it was not the right thing to do. However, he was glad that they were just eating together today and were not going to get married, so he couldn't say he didn't like it. Meanwhile, the man asked him not to stop until everything was cold and to tell him if he wanted anything else. The boy thanked him, although he was surprised that the man hadn't touched any of the food. After a hearty dinner, they finally went out into the fresh air. Du Jin was hiding the money he had left, and the man was enjoying the fact that he had eaten well. Suddenly the man noticed that it was getting quite dark and suggested that they call it a night and go back inside, to which he agreed. Yulha was walking behind and assumed that they were probably going home now. He also decided that he should repay the man with something, since he had been treating him since the morning. So he tried to think of something to do. But on the other hand, he realized that if he told him about it, he would want to meet him again, and that would be unacceptable. Finally, he thought of nothing better than to invite the man to coffee. However, the man asked him to pay attention to something else instead. He emphasized that he should not look at him, but in the other direction. Then he pointed to the sea. The guy couldn't believe his eyes because he saw a beautiful picture of a bridge that sparkled with the bright, colorful lights of the night city. Du Jin told him that he had heard that he lived in Seoul and noted that, compared to those views, it was probably not very beautiful here, although there was something to see. However, the guy said that this city was really nice. In addition, he noticed that it had been a long time since he had looked at the landscape without thinking about anything, because in the past he had always been focused on work. He also remembered, pursing his lips, that he had been dating a guy for more than five years and had never spent time with him like this. However, he always hoped that he would recognize him someday. Although, as it turned out, he was the only one who thought about the fact that they were dating, and it was giving him no peace of mind. At the same moment, the man turned to him and asked if he regretted moving here. Yulha replied that this was not true, and added that he had gotten rid of the feeling of regret before he arrived. This raised a lot of questions for the man. Du Jin didn't understand what kind of regret he was talking about, but he noticed that it was very upsetting. So he touched his face and asked if he was okay. He was anxious to know if it was his fault and if he had done something wrong. The boy tried to gently remove his hand, but was wary of how the man could understand his mood so well. And when the man asked him to tell him if he felt bad, he realized that his former partner did not pay attention to his pain. Yulha started to cry, which seriously confused and frightened the man. He started asking her what had happened. Wiping away his tears, he tried to justify himself, saying that it was because he had just gotten something in his eye. Du Jin asked him to close his eyes so that he could blow on his eyelashes. After that, he touched his face with both hands and came closer. The guy blushed and asked him to wait. However, he continued to blow away the excess from his eyes. Eventually, Yulha's tears dried up, and he could not recover from what was happening, feeling only the man's big hands. However, when the man suddenly kissed him on the forehead, he was shocked and froze in surprise. So he pushed the man away and reminded him of how he had hit him last time. However, the man explained that he just didn't want him to cry. In fact, Du Jin was sure that they would get married, so he emphasized that the man's opinion on the matter would soon change. After that, he said it was time for them to go. Yulha angrily muttered behind him that this would never happen, but he said that they would see what would happen next. The guy was outraged by this behavior, not realizing that this was happening to the man and what he had just meant. He was also worried that it would mean that he would fall in love with him. 
At the same time, Du Jin reminded him of his offer to have coffee, so he said that it was time to do so, and then they could go home. Eventually, they reached a coffee shop, where the guy ordered drinks, which the waiter later mixed up. However, when Yulha asked if one coffee would be enough, the man said it was and confirmed that everything was delicious. Later, they continued walking along the waterfront, talking about everyday life situations. Suddenly, the wind started to blow, and Eula began to shiver violently. He shoved his hands under his armpits and tried not to show that he was cold. As soon as Dojin noticed, he offered to put on his coat, although he refused, saying that he was not the only one who was cold. After that, he turned around and explained that it was all because of the wind, which would pass in a moment. He asked me to put everything back on and walked in the other direction. However, before he could take a couple of steps, he felt quite warm behind him. It turned out that the man had wrapped his coat around him from behind. The guy tried to push him away and explained that he had already told him that he felt fine. However, the man said that it would be better for both of them. Du Jin asked him to come closer because he could see that he was cold. So he agreed, mentally noting that the man always does things his way. However, despite the fact that he was snuggled up to his sweater, he realized that he couldn't go on like this because he shouldn't fall in love again. After a while, the car pulled up to the house where they lived and stopped at the entrance. Dujin started shaking Yulha, telling him that they had arrived. However, he was sound asleep. His sleep was so deep that no words or sounds could disturb him at that time. The man realized that he must have been very tired, so he decided to carry the boy himself, in his arms, to the apartment. However, the higher they climbed, the more the boy hugged the man and mumbled something about being soft, warm, and having a pleasant scent around him. Swallowing hard, Du Jin emphasized to the man that they had arrived. He asked him to wake up and get off his back. The sharp screams startled him a little, so he jumped up and down and, in his slumber, began to ask him what he had done wrong. In addition, he felt very ashamed and apologized for falling asleep so soundly. However, the man assured him that everything was fine and he should not worry. After that, Do Jin gave him his bag and said that it was probably time to go home. The guy hurriedly took it and agreed to this proposal. Later, he bowed to him and thanked him for the day. He said that it had been a lot of fun and that it had lifted his spirits. He replied that he was glad he had enjoyed it. They said goodbye to each other, and then Yula started to unlock the door while Dojin stayed behind, sighing. Suddenly, he decided to ask the guy if he wanted to meet up tomorrow. At this, the boy froze in surprise. Yulha was thinking about what he should do now. He was worried that he would want to meet him like he did today. However, this could not be allowed. So he warned him that he couldn't make it tomorrow because he had to do something. In fact, he wanted to find an apartment and it would take time. Hearing this, the man was upset. However, when the guy turned around and said he would go first, he grabbed him by the shoulder and asked him to wait. He emphasized that tomorrow was a day off. After that, he said that they could meet after he finished all his business. Then, hesitating a bit, he scratched his head and added that it could be done even if it was late. He also began to mumble about the possibility of spending the night tonight. The guy was dumbfounded by such offers, and on the same day, so just in case, he asked again what it all meant. The man, nervously, turned his head to the side and explained that he hadn't meant anything by it, which was quite strange. After that, he turned around sadly, wishing the boy good night and adding that he would call him later. Yulha was puzzled, but he knew he had to tell him not to contact him again. So, he called out to him and asked him to stop, emphasizing that he had one request. However, the man said that it was too late and suggested that we talk about it next time. Watching the man slowly weave his way back to his house, the boy became sad because he wanted there to be no such next time at all. Suddenly, unexpectedly for himself, Yula began to hug him around the waist and ask him to stay. Realizing that he had made a mistake, he took a frightened step back and began to make excuses that he hadn't meant it. 
However, the man couldn't stand the tension, came closer and kissed him, which drove the latter crazy. He began to push Dojin away, although he was surprised as the guy's behavior changed every second. In fact, Eula himself did not understand what was happening to him and why he kept clinging to this person. So when he returned, he said that they should pretend that nothing had happened. So, despite the man's pleas to stop and talk, he hurriedly went into the apartment and slammed the door right in front of him. That's how the weekend passed. Yulha was concerned that he had to go back to work tomorrow, and he also regretted not doing what he had planned. In addition, while taking a shower, he remembered that his husband had called and texted him several times a day, but he did not answer, pretending that he was not at home. He realized that if he stayed and ignored him, he would come here. He was also afraid of the feeling that things were getting strange with him. He was worried that it was impossible, but his body kept thinking about the man. When he was getting dressed, he realized that it was all because of the mark, not because of any feelings or sympathies. In addition, he heard from others that Alphas and Omegas sometimes feel strong attraction to each other because of it. He also assumed that the man was asking him to marry him, not because he cared about him, but because of his reputation in society, because he was an Alpha. Finally, tired of the obsessive thoughts, he reassured himself that everything would be resolved in time, because everything in the world has an expiration date. Touching his clothes, he hoped that one day he would not care about these incomprehensible feelings he was experiencing now while they were separated. Therefore, he decided that he needed to end it as soon as possible. So he picked up his phone and started looking for the number of the apartment owner. The next morning, Du Jin cleaned his classroom diligently, although it was hard to do this annual spring cleaning. When he finished vacuuming, the man thought that he should first put the books away and then wipe the windows. However, all his efforts stopped in a second when he received a message on his computer. So he immediately rushed to see what it was, hoping it was Eula. However, in a moment he was disappointed to come back, as it was a simple warning that the internet would soon be disconnected. However, it was not the end because his cell phone started ringing on the table, along with some kind of message. Du Jin rushed to see what it was again, because he was looking forward to a call from the guy. So, full of hope, he grabbed the phone in his hands. But he was again unsuccessful. It turned out that it was an advertisement that contained information about bonuses on his account for the previous month. The man was very upset that the guy had not yet responded to the message he had sent him in the morning so he realized that the guy probably just didn't want to talk to him. Although for him it was strange, since the atmosphere that day, in his opinion, was quite good. Recalling all the details, he suddenly assumed that this behavior could be because of the kiss they had shared. Du Jin tried to justify himself, as he had tried very hard to restrain himself at the time, although it was not easy. He blushed a little and began to think about the fact that not many days had passed since he had put the mark, but it was the first time he had been so attracted to someone. Also, remembering the morning after they had contacted each other, he realized that when he came to, he was very nervous because he didn't understand what to do in such situations. Given that Yulha was an Omega, his physique was quite small for a man. In addition, he looked very young, like a student. Despite the fact that he was very frightened by the thought that the guy might be underage, he remembered that he had seen a contract where the first digits were his year of birth. This reassured him a bit because, according to his calculations, Yulha had to be one year old, according to that document. The only thing he could not believe was that he was actually older than him. Eventually, after a while, the man decided to go to the pharmacy and buy some pills. But when he heard the boy muttering about being very cold, he went to get a blanket. Although, after stopping for a moment, he assumed that the boy's behavior could be due to the fact that he had just had his heart broken once. However, for him, as a person who had never experienced such a thing, it was unclear why he would be so sad. Du Jin leaned over the boy, who was sleeping soundly, and realized that he was not ready to give him up to another person right now. As he gently touched his face, he thought that he was actually grateful to his ex, 
whom he didn't know for putting the mark on him, and it was strange because it was the first time he had ever felt that way. The guy's scent seemed to be constantly luring him to him, and it did not give him peace of mind, even when he was so confused and upset. Then, touching his lips, he whispered quietly that it didn't matter to him, that it was just a mistake he had made while drunk. Then, for the first time, he had the idea that he could become his mate, although it was a bit unexpected for him. Finally, after covering him with a blanket, he reproached himself for saying such things to a person who was sound asleep, so he decided to immediately turn on the heater and quietly apologized. So now he was sure that it was one of the most shocking things he had ever done in his life, namely, the decision to get married. He was puzzled by the fact that the boy was very different from himself during a special period, so he hesitated several times when raising this topic, because he reacted very sharply. However, he believed that he had no choice but to keep him close to him. The thought of him leaving became unbearable. Du Jin was embarrassed that he had even thought about it, but he was confident that his intuition had never failed him. The only thing that was disturbing was that he hadn't seen Eula since that day, and this led to worries that he did not want to contact him. So he decided that he would go to him himself, and then he opened the door and left the office. However, passing by the classrooms, he noticed that it was very quiet and assumed that the lesson was still in progress. Then he cautiously looked inside so as not to scare anyone. To his surprise, Eula was calmly conducting the lesson, asking the students if they had sent him all the files. Afterward, he smilingly told the students that this would be the end of today's class. Meanwhile, Do Jin's face turned red, and he felt a strange tightening sensation in his chest. He turned back and leaned against the wall, reassuring himself that it was just because he hadn't seen him for two days. However, he realized that with each such meeting, the boy becomes even more special to him. As he continued to watch Eula, he wondered if he would be able to figure out what he was doing if he was around him. However, he was happy to see that he looked happy enough. He was also glad that he seemed to have made friends with the children. He was especially pleased when Yulha told the students that he was going to give small gifts to those who turned in their work. Suddenly, Du Jin was a little worried because he heard the teacher saying goodbye to the students, which meant that the lesson was coming to an end. So he decided that now he could finally talk to him and waited for all the children to leave. However, one of the students, Min He, recognized him as her previous class teacher and asked what he was doing here. It was very bad timing, but instead of answering, he started asking her how she was doing, to which she happily began to answer. Suddenly, however, the girl was suddenly called by her teacher, so she turned in his direction and asked what was wrong. A moment later, Eula himself came out to them, saying that she had forgotten her bag with a change of clothes in the classroom. However, when he noticed Do Jin standing next to the girl, his mood changed dramatically. The boy was a little confused, so he stammered and began to ask the man why he had come here. Du Jin greeted him back and asked him how he had spent his weekend and if he had taken care of all his business. Eula blushed and nervously tried to explain that he had managed everything, and it was all thanks to him. Du Jin asked if he had some time to talk. However, he remained silent and simply handed his things to the student. After that, the next class began to enter. The children were shouting and cheering so loudly that it became clear that they would not be able to talk. Yulha apologized and emphasized that he did not have time because the next lesson was about to begin. Then the man offered to meet later. However, he turned around, telling the children to take their seats, and said that he was busy today. Dujin began to go crazy with anger, so he called his name again and asked if he could come back later. Yulha tensed up, and without turning his head, he wanted to answer something at first, but abruptly changed his mind and silently went back to his seat. After that, he blushed and hurried the students to sit down as soon as possible. So, the man clenched his hand into a fist, and with a sigh promised that he would definitely come back. He was so upset that he didn't even notice Minnie, who said she would try to come see him soon. 
In fact, Du Jin tried to make excuses for the guy, explaining his behavior by saying that he just couldn't answer right now because he was busy. However, they did not manage to meet that day or the next, and did not meet again. So he decided to come to his house, although no one answered the phone. He didn't understand why he was being treated this way and felt that he deserved at least one meeting. So finally he decided to send him a message. Although, leaning his head against the door, he still hoped that he was avoiding him because he was in a bad mood, as he missed him a lot and really wanted to hear the guy's voice. Suddenly, his thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a message on his phone, which he immediately took out of his pocket. Du Jin was happy that it was from Yula, but he was also disappointed because he wrote that it would be difficult for him to meet him because he was traveling to study. In addition, the guy asked not to contact him anymore. He was sad because he had just been really dumped, and it was very painful and offensive. So he returned home where his pet was waiting for him, barking and running around. The puppy could hardly wait for his owner to arrive and sat looking at him, full of affection. Du Jin could not pass by, so he hugged the dog and lay down on the floor with him. The dog began to lick his face, expressing his love and affection. Du Jin sat up and began to wipe his face. As he did so, he noticed that Doki was always full of energy. After that, he put on his slippers, which he chewed on again, and went to pour him some food. Mentally, he decided to wait for the boy's response, hoping that he would answer. At the same time, he tried not to lose hope, and assured himself that until he returned from school, he would not think that he had been abandoned by him. However, while he was pouring food for his pet, his phone rang on his desk nearby. It turned out that it was his father, who told his son that they had already arrived home. When the man asked if they had a good vacation, he thanked them for the trip and asked them to come and pick up some souvenirs. However, since the parents returned earlier than planned, the son asked what had happened. The father replied that he had suddenly received a call from his tenant, saying he was moving out. While Du Jin asked Do Ki to ignore him, he added that he just didn't want to bother him with such matters. So he took care of it himself. His son asked which apartment they were moving out of and on what date. The man told him that it was an apartment where a rather nice guy lived. Du Jin froze in his tracks when he realized that it was Yulha, who, as it turned out, had asked in advance if he could move out. His father continued to tell him about this story and asked him to bring Doki to him and his mother, but he was no longer listening. He was shocked by this turn of events, so he hung up the phone, clenching his hand into a fist in pain and frustration. The next day, Yula calmly saw his students off after class, saying goodbye for the spring break. He was also excited to become an official employee when the new semester starts next week. In addition, he was pleased with himself because he managed to avoid Dojin by calling the landlord directly. Although he was a little upset, remembering that he had even threatened his parents, but hadn't said anything about the house. This meant that they knew nothing about his relationship with them. He remembered how he explained everything to his father and asked him not to tell the manager as they knew him from work. In the end, the latter was understanding, so he managed to get his belongings out unnoticed. Since then, he started living in a motel, although it was more expensive. Now, his only wish was to end it all and cut off all ties so that he would never see Do Jin again. However, despite this, his soul still ached, and there was no relief. Thus, immersed in his thoughts, he did not even notice that someone had come to see him. It was Li Ji Wu who was very angry. Suddenly, the man began to shout and said that he had been waiting for their meeting for a long time. After that, he started to walk toward him and said that it was almost impossible to meet him lately. Yulha leaned against the wall and asked what was going on with the man. The man emphasized that last time he hadn't given him a clear answer and hadn't told him what kind of relationship he and Dojin had. The man nervously demanded to know if they were together and if they were really dating. The man first told him to calm down. Later, he explained that their relationship was not what he thought it was. He also asked him not to ask him such questions anymore. Li Ji Wu came to his senses a little bit 
and tried to ask him something about the conversation that took place between them in the restroom. However, the guy told him that it was just an accident. Eula smiled and emphasized that he was an Omega and Dojin was an Alpha, and that he had simply misunderstood. The math teacher was glad that this was the case, because only now he could continue to love him. Although the boy, in turn, asked him to keep it a secret. However, he suddenly realized what Li Ji Wu had just meant, and it surprised him. The man explained that if the computer teacher was not in a relationship, he could become his partner. Yulha tried to pretend that he didn't care, but he turned pale, confirming that there was really nothing between them, and he could do whatever he wanted. Li Ji Wu admitted that he really likes his teacher, and that when he saw them, he thought they were together. Because of this, he was upset and hesitated whether he should give up his feelings. The boy continued to listen to how happy he was that it wasn't true, but inside he felt completely different emotions. He felt very bad. Suddenly, the math teacher suddenly grabbed his hand and asked him to do one thing. However, he snatched it away, apologized, and said that he was a little busy right now because he had an appointment. No matter how much he tried to explain that he just wanted to ask him a few questions because he was closer to him than anyone else, the guy got nervous and pulled away. Finally, when his hand almost turned blue, he asked why he was asking him these questions. He was also horrified that he was surrounded by such ill-mannered people. He felt very offended because he hated that selfish people did not care about the feelings of others. However, his despair was suddenly interrupted when he heard someone behind them demanding that they stop arguing. It turned out that Do Jin had come into their office and put his hand on Li Ji Wu's shoulder and looked at him with a stern look. The man was confused, so he began to ask why he had come here, stumbling over every word. Du Jin became angry and demanded to know what the man had just wanted to do with Yulha. The teacher looked down and said that he really didn't understand what was going on, because he didn't mean any harm. However, he grabbed him by the shirt and asked why, in that case, the boy was so scared. But he repeated, once again, that he really hadn't done anything. Yulha started to stop him and asked him to stop, explaining that he had no bad intentions towards him. The man listened to him and let the teacher go, saying that he had simply misunderstood him. He also apologized. After that, he turned to Yulha, grabbed him by the arm, and ordered him to go outside immediately to discuss something. The guy resisted and asked him to wait. He also asked where he was going. However, it was useless to argue. Instead, Li Ji Wu was left alone in the office. His hands trembled, and his lips repeated the name of his lover by themselves. Meanwhile, the men went outside and headed for Do Jin's car, which was parked nearby. The boy shouted and asked why he was treating him like this, but he did not hear an answer. Instead, the man suddenly stopped and asked why he was not allowed to do this, while others were allowed to. When Yula asked him what he meant, Dojin turned around and said that it was because he didn't want to talk to him, but at the same time he was talking to others calmly. He also added that the guy's actions lately have been indicative of this, and that this is what worries him the most. Yulha became very scared, but he still asked what he could have done. The man grabbed his head because he could not believe that he really did not understand or know anything. After that, he grabbed him by the arm again and ordered him to get into the car, although the boy did not want to do so. Yulha was puzzled by this behavior and asked him why he was doing this to him. Du Jin tilted his head and began his story. He said that he had told him many times that day what he shouldn't do, but he didn't listen and asked him to tag himself. Instead, he now avoids him and ignores him. However, the guy explained that it was just an accident and a mistake, so he shouldn't say strange things. He also added that he was acting as if they were in a relationship. Gritting his teeth, Du Jin couldn't understand why the guy was calling everything in those terms and wanted to cut off all ties. So he grabbed him by the shoulder and started shouting, emphasizing that the fact that he had labeled him was his sincere feeling. He explained that otherwise he could not have done it, having known the man for less than a day. He confirmed that he himself understood that it was ridiculous. 
but it was driving him crazy. After that, he let him go and said that he would never understand how hard he tried to restrain himself that night, and that was despite the effect of the damn pheromones, which were quite strong. He added that he had to fight every second to keep from biting him on the neck. Dujin said that he was in pain because of him, but the devil disappeared immediately. He also added that his smell was asking for protection and love. However, when the man said that he still thought it was a mistake, tears came to Eula's eyes. Finally, he stood up and confirmed that he, as the Alpha, could choose as much as he wanted, offering to choose someone else. With a trembling voice, the guy began to apologize for making his life so difficult. He said it was his fault and asked him to forget it and not to impose his feelings. Clenching his hands into a fist and looking into his eyes, Dojin asked him if he really meant it. The guy pushed him away and confirmed that he was not joking. He said that if he wanted to feel differently, he could go and find someone else. However, after Dojin lowered his head in despair, he asked to be let go. However, he noticed that something was wrong with the man because he began to smell a familiar odor. And in a moment, he realized that by all indications, the man was going through a special period. Finally, he covered his mouth with his hand because he could no longer breathe. He also realized that he had never experienced anything like this before. His whole body was trembling, and he felt something strange inside, as if the mood of a man who was very angry had passed to him. Dujin's behavior was seen as very dangerous to him, so given his serious expression, Yula was very scared. He was horrified to realize that if he got caught by an alpha like him, it would not end well just like then. He remembered the period in his life when others laughed at him because he was an Omega who had no special period. At the same time, his ex didn't mind that Yula had relationships with others because he was indifferent to him. So he didn't want that now because if it continued, he would have to go through this hell again, which was unacceptable. So he hurriedly started looking for a way to open the car door so that he could get out of here as soon as possible. He asked the man to let him go and not touch him, but he grabbed his hair and was relentless. Du Jin explained that it was too late and now he could not give him up, as the man could not leave him either. At that very second, Yula remembered the promise that he would never force him to do anything, that he would never do anything stupid again and would always care about his feelings. However, as it turned out, all these wonderful words of support and understanding were a deception, which meant that he was taken advantage of again. Yula started crying and screaming that he hated him. Sobbing, he asked him not to hurt him, promising to marry him in return. Anything, if only he would stop. All these words of the boy were like an electric shock. His heart hurt because he didn't want to be with him. So he started biting his hands to come to his senses. After that, he ordered the guy to leave immediately. As the man watched in amazement, the man reiterated that he needed to get out of the car before he started to do it again. So Yulha seized the moment and abruptly opened the door, running away from this inadequate man. Du Jin was furious. He had just realized what had happened and was beating himself up for doing what he had done. Meanwhile, as soon as he got home, he immediately began to pack his things in a hurry. He was crying because he had no one left in this place, not even his grandmother. He also scolded himself for coming back to start all over again. Yulha was determined to leave this damned city and home and never come back. However, he froze when he saw a man's car pull up to his house out of the corner of his eye. He was furious and didn't understand why the man had returned so quickly, which made him even more disrespectful and angry. It got even worse when Mr. Dojin came around the corner and headed straight for him. Yulha had never regretted living in the same house as he did now, so he decided to run away. He began to run in a hurry in the other direction, assuming that he would not catch up with him, because then he would definitely not forgive him. So when he heard Do Jin calling him, he was frightened and began to shout at him not to follow him, because he didn't want to see him again. But Do Jin came closer, hugged him tightly, and asked him to listen to him, which surprised him. Yulha asked him to let him go, but Do Jin admitted that he was in the wrong and could not help himself. 
he made excuses for his anger and for the fact that it coincided with his special period. He also said that he had already taken pills and would not behave like that anymore. However, the boy did not believe him. He slipped out of his hands and said he didn't even want to hear about it. In addition, he repeated that he did not want to have any connection with him and asked him not to pursue him. He was crying a lot and said that he had long ago made it clear that he did not like it. He recalled how he had grabbed the math teacher and then treated him so horribly. Dujin was shocked when the boy said that he couldn't have done anything differently because he was the Alpha. Yulha couldn't stop himself, so he covered his face with his hands and added that he was selfish and thought he could do anything with him. Although the man replied that this was not true at all. However, as soon as he reminded him of the move, he looked up with tears in his eyes and asked if that was what it was all about. Du Jin tried to explain that it was not what he thought, but the man continued to resist and begged him to let go. Suddenly the man hugged the boy and asked him not to leave, explaining that he simply could not live without him. Eula continued to say that he hated alphas because they never think about the feelings of others and lamented that now he had to get married because of the mark. The man admitted that he had never abandoned him or acted badly because he was not like his ex. However, the man continued to say that he did not believe him. Du Jin said that it didn't matter, even if it was hard to believe, because it didn't change the fact that he liked him. Yula was surprised that someone could behave like that and do such unacceptable things that offended him. The man apologized for this, and then there was silence. The boy did not resist anymore, but he did not say anything either. Finally, he looked up sharply and asked him, confused if he really liked him. He replied that he did and said it was obvious. Yulha didn't believe him and thought he was doing it to save his reputation. However, the man explained that it was pointless to propose marriage to a person for such a reason. The guy noted that all the alphas he had met treated Omegas like toys. However, these words outraged Dojin. He was furious that such scum came across his path. After that, he took his head and repeated once again that he was different from such alphas because he was sincere with him. He also added that he liked him more than he expected and that these feelings were only growing. Looking down, he recalled how he had cried in the car and explained that he felt hopeless then and thought he would lose him forever, which is why he stopped. So now, with his hand on his heart, he said that he needed it regardless of the label or the fear of judgment. And, looking into the eyes of the puzzled boy, he added that it was all because he was his only match and true destiny. He said that he had not yet realized why he had felt his emotions then, because it defied any explanation. Touching Yulha's face, he said that this is the proof that they are a couple, because, in other words, it is impossible to explain that smell. However, the guy said he didn't understand what he was talking about. Du Jin clenched his hand into a fist and said that it did sound like nonsense, but he emphasized that he had no idea how to describe it. After that, he got down on one knee and asked him to think about him for once. In return, he promised to do his best not to become such a terrible alpha as he thought. Yula blushed and, covering his mouth, asked what he was going to do now. The man reiterated that he liked him and asked him not to leave but to stay with him. The guy said that it was all a lie because, according to him, it all started the day they put the tags on him, so that was the reason. He begged me to think about it and recalled how he had looked after him and how he had walked on the beach. The guy emphasized that it was the tag that made him feel all this. However, the man jumped up nervously and replied that the tag was not a separate person, so he asked not to deny his feelings in such a way. Grabbing his hand, he asked if he had ever felt similarly about him. Eula replied that he had not. However, the man interrupted him and asked what happened on the day they were on the beach. He also said that he was sure that he had felt something similar. They were fighting so much that they didn't notice anyone around them, although when people walked by, they immediately realized that they were having a love quarrel. In the end, Yula felt very ashamed, so he asked Do Jin to let him go first. However, suddenly he felt this strange and at the same time quite familiar smell that for some reason enveloped him again. 
From the boy's behavior, the man immediately realized that he also smelled something, and he could not believe it. However, Yulha pushed him away and started shouting for the man to stay away from him, because he didn't want to feel it. He also asked him not to let the smell get to him. After that, he abruptly turned around and started running away in the other direction, ignoring Dojin's requests to wait and stop. Finally, he told him not to follow him, because he would kill him for it. He also assured him that he did not like the man. Du Jin was at a loss. A bitter tear ran down his cheek, and his heart ached with intense pain and disappointment that he really thought so. Yulha was in a great hurry to keep going, even though he didn't realize what had just happened. He realized that this smell was completely different from the pheromone he had recently smelled in the car, and did not understand why he smelled as if he liked it. Squinting his eyes, he thought that this was impossible, and that the emotions he was talking about could not smell like that. These thoughts made his head explode, so he didn't notice anyone around him, and finally, he abruptly crashed into a passerby. Both of them fell to the ground, shocked by the surprise, feeling pain in their heads and sides. The man held his heart and emphasized to Yula that he should look in front of him when he was in such a hurry. The guy felt very embarrassed, so he apologized and said he was sorry for what happened. However, when he called him by name, he immediately recognized the stranger as Minje and began to ask him why he was here. The friend shook his hand and explained that he had just heard that there was a big sale nearby, so he decided to go to it. However, his attention was drawn to the guy's clothes, so he started asking him if he was cold and why he was in such a hurry. Then he noticed a bite on his neck that was bleeding, so he offered to wipe it with a napkin. However, he refused. Covering the place with his hand, the guy explained that everything was fine and nothing terrible had happened. However, Minje did not believe it was an accident, so he assumed that something had happened to Dojin's teacher. Yulha assured him that he just thought that if he told him the truth, he would make him worry again so he didn't say anything. His friend was shocked that he was constantly lying to him when he said that everything was fine. However, the guy emphasized that, in any case, no one could have solved his problem. Minje grabbed his arm and said that it would not work. He said that they would first go to him to treat his wounds. If he didn't resist, there was nothing to do, and he just had to follow his friend wherever he led. Eventually, after listening to everything in detail, Minje understood what had happened between Yulha and Dojin's teacher. However, he felt that something was wrong in the story, because the Alpha could not stop during the special period, given that he had already bitten him once. He took out a band-aid, trying not to show his anxiety, but he knew that it was impossible. Thinking back to his story with his husband, Hyun Su, he realized that his mood usually deteriorates during special times. So he noticed that the guy must have been in a lot of pain and embarrassed to be bitten like that. However, Yula didn't understand the difference between a normal bite and one that was done during a special period. Minje squinted one eye and explained that Alpha's canines are usually bigger and sharper than Omega's. In addition, they have a substance in their saliva that makes their partner immobile. However, he suddenly stopped because he noticed something strange in his friend's behavior. He was very calm, which suggested that something was wrong with him as well. After all, it usually takes several hours to calm down. So he started shaking him by the shoulders and asking him if he had a stomach ache and a fever. He replied that he did, but that he was fine now. Minje suggested that this could be because his first special period was late, so the reaction is different compared to normal omegas. Or it could be explained by the fact that he is a dominant omega. While his friend was mentally searching for answers to his questions, Yula wondered why he always didn't finish his sentences. Minje explained that he was worried that he and Dojin could smell each other. After that, he showed him a video of an Omega man he had been watching recently, who talked about sharing emotions. It said that in addition to pheromones during cycles, people can smell other odors coming from the body of another person. For example, the smell can be used to understand the mood or state of a partner. After a while, Yulha went to the restroom, 
thinking about the information he had recently received. He still could not believe what he had heard. The woman's words that he shouldn't worry about it because it was not a disease shocked him. He still could not believe that he could feel the emotions of that person. Besides, there was no other option but to be marked. In addition, he could not get the thought out of his head that such symptoms indicate that this couple was destined by fate because they understand each other better than others and cannot deceive. However, whatever it was, what was happening then was indeed for a reason and had its own explanation. However, he did not understand why the man suddenly liked him and what was so special about him. After all, he was short, unattractive, and not as talkative as Minje. Looking at himself in the mirror, he was very worried that Do Jin would be disappointed in him with every meeting. Although he agreed that the whole story was quite absurd, throwing the towel into the hamper, he realized that now he at least knew that he wasn't lying, judging by the smell of it. Although he still couldn't trust him completely, because his feelings could change. Besides, he was worried about whether he would be able to handle being dumped again if he started dating him and became serious about the relationship. Eventually, Min Jie invited his friend to eat. Yula agreed but asked where his husband and son were. He replied that they had made dinner and gone to his parents' house. The guy started to worry that it was all because of him, but he explained that they often do this and today was just such a day. Yulla started to eat and remarked that it had been a long time since they had eaten together, especially a home-cooked meal. His friend smiled and suggested that they try the salad Hyunsu had made, saying it was delicious. The boy agreed. Suddenly, while enjoying the dish, he remembered the porridge that Do Jin had made that day and that it was also very tasty. He also remembered how skillfully the man handled the crab meat, easy and skillful. It was also unexpected to learn about his food preferences, because, despite his appearance, he seemed to have a strong taste for sweets. So, he wondered if he would feel as comfortable as he did then if they were together again. With these thoughts in mind, he reluctantly moved his spoon around the plate, surprising his friend. Minjay suddenly started shouting and apologizing for being so careless about his problems and not being able to help him in any way. However, the guy assured him that everything was fine because he didn't know anything. He also emphasized that he was very pleased to have a friend who cared about him so much. So Min Jae offered him to stay with him, as his husband could help with a lawyer in case of persecution by Do Jin. However, he assured him that he did not want to go that far. The friend reminded him that he had initially said that the man scared him. He also added that if you think about it from the point of view of a father, he is worried that the teacher is forcing and harassing someone. He emphasized that if we look at this problem deeper, we can assume that he can do this to his students. Yulha jumped out of his seat and said that Du Jin was definitely not that kind of person and that it was all because of the tag and the fact that he always forgets to take his medication. Min Jae was shocked that he was making excuses for him, so he asked him if he didn't like the teacher and if he felt anything for him. The boy began to make excuses, saying that he didn't, although his reddened face made it clear. The friend thought that it all sounded like a lie, so he said that he was very surprised to hear that he had stopped during a special period. When Yula asked him why he thought that, he explained that he had never seen or heard of Alphas doing such a thing, he was even a little interested in it. He said that in order to keep yourself in mind like that, you need to love your partner very much, although the guy hadn't even thought about it. He asked what would happen if the Alpha continued to restrain himself, but his friend's words scared him a lot. He explained that an Alpha can become wild at one point, like a beast, and will no longer be able to function normally. Yulha started asking what he should do now, but he just shrugged his shoulders, mentally convinced once again that he had sympathy for the guy. Min Jae asked him if he understood his feelings from the smell and if he knew it was not a lie. After all, it seemed to him that he was attracted to the man, although he could not decide to do so. The guy hesitated but assured him that he would never be with an Alpha again because he did not want to be in that situation again. 
The friend emphasized that this does not happen in all relationships. He agreed that he had been a little unlucky in his first romance. But he asked me to look at him, married and happy. In addition, he said that at some point, feelings become dull, and every time difficult times begin, these moments destroy him. Therefore, he suggested that he let go of everything and try to start a relationship with Do Jin because he might be the person who would turn his life around. And this is much better than the meetings organized by his ex. However, the guy covered his ears with both hands and started screaming and asking him to stop mentioning it. Yula emphasized that he did not want to hear anything more about that story. The friend explained that he was only saying this because he wanted him to find his happiness. So he apologized to Minje. He thanked him for cooking such a delicious dinner, but said he was a little nauseous. Then he asked for permission to go to his room and rest. So the friend also apologized for what he said, and of course agreed to let him rest for a while. Eula staggered into the next room, covering his mouth to avoid the appearance that he might burst into tears. However, as soon as the door closed, the tears flowed down his cheeks by themselves, and he realized that he would like to think like his friend. Sometime later, the boy woke up because he had a dream in which he was with Do Jin, where the latter promised that he would never leave him again. Yulha was worried that all these memories were haunting him and was reproaching himself for what he had done before. So, an hour later, his feet led him to the house where he used to live, although he had no idea what to do now. Yulha hesitated whether he should persuade the man to forgive him for what he had done while he was unconscious. At the same time, it hurt him to realize that this would not change his feelings for him and his decision to marry. He also wondered if there was a guarantee that the situation would not become more complicated. All of this was bothering him because he couldn't even send him a message, as he had left his phone at school and there was too much time until morning. But on the other hand, he blamed himself for not wanting to see him because of some strange dream. Finally, he got cold and decided to go to a motel to think carefully about what to do next. After that, he would find his phone and contact Minje. However, a cute and friendly dog appeared on his way and started barking at him. The animal was friendly and sometimes wagged its tail to show its friendliness. The puppy ran around, jumping on the boy from time to time as if inviting him to play with it. Yulha sat down next to him and decided to look at his leash, where his name was written. On the small chain was an inscription, Doki and at the bottom, the owner's phone number in case he got lost. The boy called the puppy to him and decided to carry him in his arms to find the owner. The difficulty was that he didn't have a phone and couldn't call the number, so looking around he decided to see if there was a park nearby and go there first. However, he was worried about what he would do if he didn't find the owner, because he couldn't watch him. Suddenly, Doki started to pull away from his hands, then the boy realized that he probably wanted to go downstairs. He was surprised that the puppy had suddenly started to behave strangely and tried to explain to him that he shouldn't bark so loudly in the morning. Eula assumed that it might be because the owner was somewhere nearby, so he started looking around. However, in a moment, he was surprised to see a familiar face around the corner. He wanted to ask what he was doing here so early until he saw that the puppy was jumping up and down and barking happily. Yulha asked if it was his dog. He hugged the animal, which began to lick him and confirmed that it was. The man explained that he had accidentally dropped it while walking and couldn't get close because he saw it spinning around him. He was surprised by what he had just said and by the fact that it was constantly avoiding his gaze. So it seemed to him that the atmosphere was completely different than it usually was, he was also surprised to be walking at such an early hour. He was angry that he was acting as if he was full of energy, because he himself had been up most of the night. Du Jin explained that he was very sorry for what had happened, and also emphasized that he just needed to run a little bit. Finally, he thanked the boy for finding his dog, turned around and told him that he had to go. In fact, Yulha was expecting a completely different reaction, and was shocked that he would just leave. So he felt like a fool, afraid that he wouldn't want to let him go like yesterday. 
In the end, he froze in place and just quietly watched him continue to move in the other direction. However, he was surprised when the man suddenly turned around and asked him to give him a minute. A few minutes later, they arrived at Dojin's home, where he was making hot tea in the kitchen. Yulha assured him that if it was about yesterday, he hadn't changed his mind. However, the man put the cup on the table and said that he knew that. He also added that it didn't matter anymore. He said that he had said it without thinking about it at all. He also emphasized that the man was right, because all his actions were really caused by the mark, not by his will. The guy was a bit puzzled that he thought so too. However, Dojin added that he still hadn't found a safe way to get rid of it, no matter how hard he tried. He said that he fully understood his decision and would not want him to suffer because of it, as he was not that irresponsible a person. Squinting his eyes, he said that the guy should understand everything because he was an Omega, because it was really hard for an Alpha to control his instincts. Yulha looked down and asked what he meant. The man replied that it was very stupid of him. He said that the price of having thoughtlessly bitten him was to accelerate the cycle and that his daily life was disrupted because of that choice. The guy was puzzled and told him that he could just find someone else, because he might get into trouble later if he left it as it was. Du Jin shook his head and emphasized that this was impossible, as the bond created by the tag was stronger than he thought, so he had no desire to start a new relationship. Therefore, he covered his face with his hand and sadly said that now it was either him or no one else. He also added that being an Omega, he would feel it at some point, because they needed each other anyway. Yulha was silent at first and then asked if this meant that he was offering them to become partners only for a special period. Du Jin confirmed this and emphasized that it would be the best option for both of them, with no strings attached and no complaints. Yulha said that if it were a problem that could be solved, he would do so immediately. The man said that in any case there was no way to remove the mark. Because of this, he asked him once again to become such partners, despite the existing disagreements between them. He explained that he was in no way going to put him at a disadvantage and promised that he could contact him every few months. He also added that he could even move, although he would not want him to, nor would he want him to quit his job because of him, making such a difficult choice. Biting his lips, Eula didn't understand why this was happening. He was quite uncomfortable, so he hated it. He also didn't understand why yesterday he smelled a strong odor from him, as if he liked him a lot, and today his feelings had completely changed. Suddenly, however, he was surprised that he did not react to the smell at all, although yesterday everything was different. He began to sniff and realized that he could not even smell it from himself which was quite strange. As he replayed their conversation in his head, he assumed that the man had changed his mind, which could have changed his feelings. In addition, he kept thinking about that video where they said that you can only be influenced and feel the other person from one side. So I was shocked to not know what would happen to him now. After all, whatever the reason, if he doesn't smell, the other person will soon find out that he is an Omega with whom he should not have a relationship. However, the fact was that if he refused now, the man would never ask him again. So, in the end, he decided to agree to do it in the future, but only when he needed it. Dujin was happy and asked if he had any other conditions. Yulha asked if he was sure that he could keep his promise and would not contact him first. The man confirmed this and emphasized that a promise is a promise. After that, the guy got up and said he had to go. Leaving the man, he blamed himself for not being able to refuse because he just wanted to get away. However, despite this, his eyes filled with tears as he realized that the man had finally decided to let him go, although he did not understand why. The boy's heart was in pain until he heard Dojin calling him again. He emphasized that it was certainly unconscionable on his part, but finally asked him for one favor— Yulha began to quickly wipe away his tears so that the man would not notice them and asked him what he wanted. Du Jin urged him to think of it as saving the man and letting him hug him, just this once. The man cheered up a bit and noticed that not even a minute had passed since he started talking differently. 
Du Jin tilted his head and apologized, explaining that he was going crazy because of the special period and could not do anything, not even the things in his daily life. He was in pain because his medication was not working and he could not sleep properly. In addition, his body did not listen to him at all. Swaying from side to side, he emphasized that this was the first time he had ever experienced this and promised that next time he would try to find someone else for his special period. Yulha asked if this meant that he needed an Omega right now to calm it down because he was the only one left. The man confirmed that he had understood correctly. So the guy agreed and without turning his head asked him to choose a time and place. After that, he hurried out of the apartment, avoiding further conversations and unwanted actions. However, as soon as he got outside, he began to cry a lot, scolding himself for what he really wanted. After a while, Eula leaned against the wall and read a message from Dojin, who said that they could meet tonight at nine o'clock in the evening on the ground floor near the parking spaces. He was confused and hesitant about whether he was doing the right thing right now, he also did not understand why he had agreed to all this in the first place. Clutching the phone in his hands, he wondered if it would be better to tell him that he couldn't meet or just run away. However, he was suddenly startled as Dojin approached him unnoticed and asked him how long he had been waiting there. The guy nervously began to explain that he had come here not long ago. So he offered to walk to the car. Looking at the night city through the glass, Eula tried to guess where they were going, because they had been on the road for quite some time. Then he looked at the man and realized that he was a little scared, as he hadn't said a word during this time. Eula hesitated whether to start a conversation himself, but he tried anyway. But the man did not hear anything, and that was the end of it. From that moment on, silence reigned in the car. They only glanced at each other from time to time, trying to do so unnoticed. Eventually, Du Jin said that they were on their way to a motel, and they were almost there, which surprised the guy a bit. So the man explained that it would be inconvenient for them to use a personal space or place. The guy agreed with this statement, but in his mind he was shocked that it would be a hotel, because he did not have good memories of this place. He turned completely pale and was very worried about whether he would be able to experience Alpha again during his special period. Remembering what happened that night, he wanted to jump out of the car immediately, so he beat himself up for agreeing to go along with it. After a while, they both found themselves in the room, but they felt very uncomfortable. Eula emphasized that he would go to the shower first. So Do Jin tiredly sat down in the chair, rummaging through his pocket. From there, he pulled out some pills, of which there were only a few left, despite the fact that he had just bought them in the morning. Looking down, the man realized that if he could just be patient a little longer, he would definitely feel better. At the same second, he looked up and saw Eula standing in front of him. He came closer and noticed that he had time to prepare, Nevertheless, Du Jin felt uncomfortable. He realized that the guy was very scared, although he was also determined. Finally, the man asked him to wait a moment. So the guy suspected that it was all because he was not emitting any pheromones right now.